Hi, I'm Robert Harrison. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to be telling you about Madness, a new environment for high accuracy, high efficiency simulation relevant to many uh, disciplines in science and engineering. It's going to be a high level presentation, so I'm not going to be able to delve into many of the details essential to the functioning of Madness and also its parallel runtime. However, what I want to do is communicate to you a little bit of how Madness works, what it does and in particular how it might be relevant to the research of yourself or the activities of your students. And I'd really like to communicate uh, how we believe Madness raises very significantly the level of composition of both scientific applications and the uh, massively parallel computer codes essential to modern computational science. So Madness is the result of a nearly decade-long collaboration between physical scientists, computer scientists, and applied mathematicians. At the top we have the team at Oak Ridge National Laboratory in the University of Tennessee. George, Diego, and Judy are mathematicians. Rebecca's a mathematician slash computer scientist. George is the lead mathematician on the project. Below we have some of our collaborators. Uh, Gregory Belkin and his long-standing uh, collaborator Lucas Monzon are uh, mathematicians at the University of Colorado. Gregory is one of the leading figures in the development and application of multi-resolution analysis. And Hideo Sakino is a senior theoretical chemist in Japan and he's using Madness to uh, perform some benchmark calculations of the response properties of molecules. So I've already described to you the objectives of the presentation. At the bottom we have a couple of URLs. The first to the uh, repository and wiki for Madness where you can get the source. It's open uh, source GPL2 so please have fun with it. And below that we have a link to the uh, automatically generated uh, documentation that also includes uh, e extensive examples that are uh, a an excellent place for uh, people starting to use Madness for their own applications. So again, Madness is a general purpose environment. It started out life uh, with applications mainly to chemistry, but it very rapidly became relevant to many other areas of physics, uh, chemistry, energy sciences, nanoscience, and there are uh, prototype applications now in climate and fusion. In addition to emphasizing scientific computation, meaning numerical computation, underneath Madness we'll see at the end of the presentation there's actually a very general purpose parallel programming environment that was motivated by the special needs of Madness and explicitly aims to run on the world's very largest computers. For example, presently it runs uh, very well on Jaguar, which is the 2.3 petaflop machine at Oak Ridge National Lab, which is the largest machine in the US, and presently the second largest machine in the world. So Madness is an example of a framework, which is a very successful concept, indeed one of the few successful concepts in managing the complexity of modern scientific computation. The framework is essentially uh, a software suite that provides a virtual machine model where various disciplines, computer science, math, domain science, can exchange knowledge and advance collectively without uh, someone having to become an expert in all of the various areas. And this complexity is a key issue that uh, constrains our ambitions in HPC and in particular if we don't do something collectively about the complexity of our problem we will not have a sustainable solution and uh, HPC will not deliver the benefits that we expect it to to society in, in the very broadest sense. So the, we have complexity intrinsic to the science, to the scalable algorithms and math, and in particular in the parallel programming software side of things, uh, managing the complexity of concurrent execution at the petascale and beyond, especially with the complexity of a rapidly evolving hardware architecture is a huge challenge. So Madness attempts to address essentially all elements of that complexity. We'll see very shortly the MATLAB-like level of composition of scientific applications. And at the end of the presentation, we'll briefly see how Madness relieves the programmer of much of the complexity of composing efficient parallel applications. Much of the uh, 
reduction in complexity in the scientific application comes from our deployment of advanced numerical methods and in particular a key element is the ability to solve integral not just differential equations. So here's an example of a very simple problem in the highest level of composition available for minus applications. So we're going to compute to a guaranteed precision of 10 to the minus 6 the electrostatic potential here of just a simple Gaussian but hopefully you can imagine a much more complicated function maybe resulting from the solution of another set of equations uh, being used. So we're going to compute the electrostatic potential due to a Gaussian and this will all run in parallel using either threads or MPI. So in the program we specify the domain, the precision, we define a function to compute our Gaussian and it's actually the next two lines that do all of the work. The first one projects uh, our function G into the multi-wavelet adapted basis set to the required precision and the next line solves Poisson's equation and the key point is it doesn't do that by iteratively solving the differential equation it does it by applying the Green's function as a single sparse matrix vector product. We're going to look briefly at some more example applications in molecular hard fock and DFT we have to solve a uh, coupled equations, one per electron, if we have a thousand electrons there are a thousand separate functions or molecular orbitals each with its own dynamically changing uh, adaptive mesh. Nuclear physics, uh, he, this project is led by Vitek Nazarevich and George Fan. Vitek is a uh, senior physicist at UT. Uh, here we have to solve the uh, equations of uh, density functional theory for uh, nuclear matter which are substantially more compli complex uh, than those of electronic structure theory. Uh, Scott Thornton is a graduate student at the University of Tennessee and he's him implemented inside Madness a uh, full band structure code including uh, formulating all of the necessary lattice sums of the integral operators. We're not just interested in static problems. Time evolution is, of course, very important. This is some work of Nick Vance in collaboration with Predrag Christic, a physicist at Oak Ridge, and Jun Jia, a mathematician at Oak Ridge. And although multi-wavelet bases, uh, bases are very uh, suitable for lots of problems and very computationally convenient, for time evolution they present some challenges that we've successfully overcome. And here you can see a little movie of a small molecule. This is a 2D slice from a 3D simulation showing how madness can uh, predict the time evolution uh, and the scale here is a log 10 scale so we can see we can get span 10 orders of uh, magnitude in the accuracy of the result. Here's the same molecule now being simulated in 3D coupling to the three electronic degrees of freedom and an additional quantum degree of freedom describing the nuclear motion. Matt Reuters, a talented uh, graduate student at Northwestern about to graduate and he was interested in the uh, uh, describing the uh, electric field between a micron scale tip and a uh, model of a silicon oxide surface and uh, using madness he was able to uh, compute the solution accurately enough to include a molecule in the gap and the problem itself spanned over seven orders of magnitude uh, resolving everywhere from the full domain of the tip down to the finest length scale near the nucleus. Uh, most ambitious calculations so far have been in six dimensions uh, understanding electron correlation. The structure of the pair wave function underlies the structure of the many body wave function so computing with this accurately would be a big advance. In Doing this, we've uh, developed and extended some partitioned SVD representations that uh, uh, enable us to circumvent some of the exponential uh, scaling problems with a number of dimensions. Central to all of this is the ability to accurately and efficiently apply the integral form of many operators, and this rep represents many advantages over the differential form. Examples of uh, integral forms of equations we can see here from electrostatics, quantum mechanics, and time evolution. I'm not going to go into those in detail. Uh, 
here is the uh, adaptive mesh in, in, in three dimensions. This is a picture of a benzene dimer that you can see the molecules edge on. And it, it, superficially, it's in a familiar adaptive mesh. We're using a discontinuous spectral element basis. The key thing is that the adaptive refinement is under completely automatic control uh, and aims to deliver the accuracy requested by the user. And, and it's this dynamic change of adaptive refinement to guarantee precision that enables us to be confident that the numeric calculus in the program corresponds one-to-one -one with the mathematical calculus we use to formulate the equations. And this represents a huge advance over most other packages. I've already mentioned some of the math and the key element at the end there is the use of separated representations to again reduce the scaling with a number of dimensions at, while at the same time keeping control of precision. Um, this separated form for the integral operators is uh, a critical advance that uh, happened about halfway through the project and really revolutionized our ability to compute. And our high level of composition starts in C++ uh, seeming tri seemingly trivially using uh, extensive C++ operator loading. So here we have the uh, C++ corresponding to this equation that will be familiar to many physicists. Uh, however, uh, C++ operator overloading will be mundane and would not be in practice useful without that guarantee of precision that gives us the one-to-one -one correspondence again between the numerical and mathematical calculus. We've already seen the highest level of composition that Madness has to offer. Madness has a layered architecture. We've just discussed briefly the applications and uh, at least skimmed over the top of some of the math and numerics. Uh, the Madness parallel runtime is sitting on top of existing standards and uh, open tools. Um, it uses a multi-threaded runtime. Madness predates Intel TBB, but given the success and uh, portability of Intel TBB will probably be migrating to that in the near future. Our runtime objectives are very forward-looking, looking forward from the petascale out to the exascale. And we aim to eliminate many of the complexities that hinder the expression of uh, massively parallel code and at the same time maintain, maintaining as much as possible backward compatibility with the legacy software that's essential to much existing science. Hopefully I've communicated to you the very dynamic and irregular nature of Madness computation that's driven us to this new runtime that's based heavily on active messages and uh, concepts drawn from uh, other successful programming languages and Madness is being helped to drive next generation computer architectures as well as next generation programming standards such as the uh, MPI3 uh, standardization effort that's underway now. I'm not going to go into detail into the uh, massively parallel runtime. I just want to bring out some of the key concepts. Futures uh, which appear now in the next C++ standard have been around for 20 years and are a very important tool for hiding latency, whether that arises from communication or algorithmic latency, which you can also interpret as dependencies. Um, global namespaces uh, give us the ability to manage the aggregate resources of the machine using names, for instance, the uh, offset uh, index level and translation inner level of a given uh, element in a massively parallel adaptively refined tree. Uh -huh. So we can access data rather than by using process ID and pointer, we can access this in a uh, name that makes sense to the application. Non-process centric computation abstracts us away from this historic idea of computation happening in a place, meaning on a process or in a certain memory space. This gives us huge flexibility for dynamic load balancing, checkpointing, restart, and uh, future work on fault tolerance and resilience. So here's some slides that talk in more detail about futures, global namespaces, and the massively parallel architecture. So just to summarize, Madness is a very generally applicable framework that is very forward looking. Here again is the URL where you can get the code. Uh, we must thank the agencies that have funded us, the Department of Energy, DARPA, 
and the National Science Foundation. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.